Hi, Mike here. One of the topics that I cover on my pivot tables training is how to create extra columns in a pivot table using formulas. Like here, I have the revenue generated from each flavour of ice cream. I have the cost of making that ice cream, the ingredients, etc. What I don't have is the profit. In this pivot table, I have the revenue generated by each of our ice cream stores. I don't want to see the revenue. I want to see how much sales tax each store needs to pay, which is a percentage of the revenue. For both of these examples, there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way. And in this video, I'll show you both methods, pointing out the disadvantages of the wrong way. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. Let's start with the profit example. I'm going to create a new column in column D that displays the profit for each flavor. I've got a couple of ways I can do that. First of all, I'll go to D2. I'll type the heading profit. If I want to format that the same as the other headings, I'll use the format painter. And then in D3, I'll enter a formula. So that will be B3 minus C3. And then I can copy that down. Copy it down, including the total. Then copy the formatting from C10 across to D10. I now have exactly what I need. So you might be thinking, what's the problem? Well, the problem will come when you try and start doing things. Column D is not part of the pivot table. If I click into column A, B or C, you've got the pivot table panel on the right. You've got the pivot table analyze and design tabs at the top. But if I click into column D, those have gone. What if I wanted to apply a filter on profit? So I'll click the filter drop down in A2. I'll go to value filters and I'll say greater than because I want to see only those flavors where the profit is greater than a certain figure. If I click the drop down in revenue, it doesn't give me profit as an option. Now, there is a way to actually apply a filter on profit, but it's a little bit more complex. It takes a couple more steps, but it's not the right way to do it anyway. So I'm not going to go into that one. If I go and apply a filter on flavor, say I only want to see the information for two or three flavors, I can do that just by selecting the flavors I'm interested in. So let's pick three flavors and click OK. And you can see what's happened now. It's all out of sync. And that's because the profit column is not part of the pivot table. And now I'll show you how to do it the correct way. Select any cell in that first pivot table. Go to pivot table, analyze fields, item sets and choose calculated field. And by the way, if the calculated field is grayed out, it's because the pivot table is based on data that's stored in the data model, as opposed to being based on data that's stored in the spreadsheet. Creating pivot tables based on the data model is not part of this video. So I'll click on calculated field. I need to give the field a name. So I'll call the field profit and then I need to enter the formula. Formulas start with an equal sign, just like traditional formulas do, but I want to remove that zero. The formula is going to be total revenue minus total cost. It's not revenue and cost, they're just text headings. But if you look in the panel on the right, the actual column names that it's pulled across from the raw data is total revenue, total cost. Rather than typing total revenue, total cost, I can double click on them from this list. So I'll double click total revenue. It puts it in in single quotes because there's a space in the column name minus, which I've typed, double click total cost and click OK. I now have a column which is part of the pivot table. I'll just make that column wider. I can change the name of the column, so I can overtype what's in D2. I can format 
the numbers in column D, and I can also change the format of D2 just by using the format painter as I did before. But what I'm interested in here is not how it looks, but how it works. So for example, if I click the filter drop down in A2 and go to value filters and greater than, I now have an option to apply a filter by profit. So I could say where the profit is greater than 10,000. Click OK. And that's worked. Let's clear the filter. And then I'll apply another filter where I select a couple of flavors. And you can see now that all the data in columns A, B, C, and D, the filters applied to. Let's now look at the second example, which is the tax. For each store, I want to know how much tax they have to pay. And the tax is 10% of the revenue. I don't actually want to see the revenue. I just want to see location and tax. So I'll select a cell in that pivot table and I'll remove revenue from the values box. Then I'll go to pivot table analyze, field item sets, calculated field, give the field a name, I'll call it tax, and the formula is going to be total revenue multiplied by 10%. And there is our tax column. Now, what if the tax rate changes? Well, I can go up to field item sets, go to calculated field, click the drop down just to the right of name and select tax and then edit the formula directly here. So let's say it goes up to 15%, click on OK, and all the figures have updated. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.